So I, you know, I am most uh, most I mean, the small group. I come from CFN Zim AS. Zim is on the IRC channel. Feel free to send me emails. So uh, today this talk is going to be mostly uh, for intermediate to advanced users. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the internals uh, of uh, the key management of the trust. Uh, and uh, I will go through the bootstrap procedure at first. Uh, I will talk about the new protocol, the TLS protocol, and, the, and how to selectively distribute assets. Uh, and by asset, it could be policies, it could be random files, secrets, or whatever. How to deny access to specific uh, hosts and uh, allow only uh, certain identities. So let's start by bootstrapping. <coughs> The first thing a user uh, sees when, uh, when he tries to, to introduce himself uh, to CFN in the tutorial, what do you do first? You bootstrap. And that confused me a lot. I mean, it's very simple, they told me. Just do CF agent minus minus uh, bootstrap. OK, but I, I want to know what, it, what the system does. Did some magic, and they told me it bootstrap. What does this mean? What magic uh, happened? Why do I need to bootstrap? So what does it happen when, when you run CF agent minus minus bootstrap at an, uh, to an IP address? So let's, uh, let's assume you have uh, a hub set up. No, actually, I will go through the hub case as well. So you run, uh, you run the bootstrap procedure. If you have a hub, this IP is your own IP. You bootstrap to yourself. If you are not a hub, you bootstrap to the hub. So. Exactly what happens is 50% uh, C code, 50% policy code. At first, we remove all the inputs directly. So all the policies are being removed. Then from the C code, we generate the failsafe.cf inside the inputs. This is a file that, uh, is, uh, that will complete the bootstrap procedure, so we need it from the C code. It's a file that you cannot easily override because it's supposed to to save the system in, in the case that you have, uh, uh, you have uh, destroyed policy. It's, it's the absolutely minimal policy, you can read it, uh, that's supposed to always work. So it's generated from the C code. That's the second step. And then uh, there are some specific steps. As I said before, if you are the hub, you are bootstrapped to yourself. So this is uh, mostly details, but I will go through everything just to prove that bootstrap is not uh, uh, magic. So. Uh, I will go through the details. So if I, if I see that my address, the minus minus bootstrap address is my address, then I set myself as hub. I touch a file to, to, to set that. And I make sure that as a hub, I have policies to distribute. That is, I have master files promises.cf. That's the only difference between bootstrap hub and bootstrap client. And that, that ends the difference. So let's, let's go again, assuming that I'm a client. This hasn't happened. We write the file policy server dot dot, which keeps an IP address to the hub. So you, you automatically download files uh, for, from the hub whenever you need. And then the C code ends and starts the failsafe.cf. The failsafe.cf that was just written in step two now is being evaluated. It's a minimal policy. And uh, it, uh, it contains the following steps. First of all, we generate an identity. That is an RSA key. We run safe key. We populate <coughs> localhost.priv.pub, a, a private key pair, a public and a private uh, key. Uh, using that key, we do copy from the hub all the master files. This is my syntax to, in order to not write the policy. But uh, it basically means that you populate your inputs. You, you first copy the initial policies. That's enough uh, to do it with master files. Uh, it's enough to do it with failsafe, but uh, then you need to have uh, all the customizations that uh, uh, the system administrator wants uh, for, uh, to, to evaluate on its host. So you download all policies. You run CFXXD, which uh, executes, uh, which is the basic thing. Please, so, yeah. So, sorry, what do you mean by using that key? You know, you know, so when you generate so you a key, you set the key in the first step. Uh, you, you 
generate the key pair in the first step. Yes, you generate the key pair. And uh, then by using that key, you, you, do, you then exchange the key procedure with the hub that I will go into more detail later. But you basically use that key and trust the key of the hub uh, ex explicitly because it's a bootstrap procedure. When you bootstrap, you, you trust the hub. It's the first time and you trust its, its key. And you generate uh, and you download all the policies. The key, you need it as an identity. Each client has a key, so you need it as an identity. And uh, uh, did I answer the question? Uh, how do you trust the hub's key? The hub key is trusted explicitly with minus minus. minus. I'm going to go into more detail about trust later. It's kind of... Uh, uh, but uh, when you bootstrap, you trust that IP's key. So uh, there is uh, a bit of danger there. And uh, what has to be explicitly said is that at the moment of running the Douglas bootstrap, yes, there is a risk. So it has to be run under a context that is considered secure. That's the exactly. bottom line. Exactly. Exactly. Right? I will get to. I will get to that. There is a separate tr trust uh, uh, slides here. But uh, uh, right now I'm just explaining what happens when you do minus minus bootstrap. Uh, it's not a magic procedure. That happens. Yes, you explicitly trust uh, the hub's key. So you 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 run executor. The executor is responsible every five minutes to. Uh, run agent and uh, and uh, eventually the system will converge and uh, finally you run uh, that can that you might not run it might run after five minutes but you actually uh, force run cf agent minus f update.cf to do the extra stuff that uh, that mm -hmm. each one has uh, in his custom policies yes please uh, so we have later point that we're going to yeah okay so if we forget all the tiny details uh, these are the, the reasons for bootstrapping. So why do you bootstrap? Because you want to copy the first set of policy. Because you want to start the executor so that uh, you run every five minutes. And last, because you want to trust the hub. That is a bootstrap. Copy, execute, and trust. Now, what is trust? What, what do I mean by trust? And uh, how do I manage trust? And how do I revoke trust? So there is a PP keys directory under Varsi Fenton. This file, this file name MD5 does MD5 equals actually this is a type of, uh, to something uh, dot pub is a public key, and this is the hash of the key. So each peer is identified by a specific uh, key file, key file named after the MD5 of the of the key, and uh, you can get it if you if you don't know know it. For example, if you generate the localhost keys, you can get it with that command: cft minus p localhost uh, dot pub. You get your ID, uh, and uh, a peer trusts all the ide identities that are in PP keys. So when you bootstrap, basically you put the hub's identity in, in PP keys, and you trust it. It remains there, and the peer does not trust anybody else. The trust model is uh, simple as that. There are no certificates, no CAs, uh, no CRLs. The, there is no, no complexity there. It's as you say, it's like you trust an RSA key, and then you, you connect based on the trust. If somebody comes in the middle after the initial trust, then the connection is dropped. It's not as you say, it's like only in the manner that we have two-way trust. The, the hub presents a key, its client presents a different key. Both have to be exchanged and in the proper places in order uh, to be both sure of, uh, of uh, each other's identity. The key basically is the identity. Uh, you, can, you can use, a, I, you can use uh, IP address. Historically, uh, CF Engine was using DNS as an identity uh, a lot. Uh, this uh, is uh, mostly uh, deprecated now in, in favor of keys, but uh, today, keys is the best way to, to guarantee identity. In the 90s, maybe DNS was trusted, but they, you cannot uh, really do that. So, when you establish trust, ha, the first time you run bootstrap is the, is, the, is the only run that you establish trust. And the difference in detail of the policy that you can change later and establish trust even later, so this is the magic that failsafe does, that in the body copy from, it has trust key equals true. At any moment, you can re-establish trust if you do what failsafe does, 
and uh, put trust key equals true to, to the failsafe, to, to your policy. The default is uh, trust key equals false, only in failsafe it is true. And in body server control, that is, the hub has also to trust every client connecting. This, by default, is uh, open to anything. To anything. This 0 to 0 to 0 slash 0 is equals to dot star. It's, uh, uh, it's a new, uh, a new way to write this. Uh, this is basically trust from everybody. So on, the, on each client, you have trust key equals true in the copy promise, in the copy from promise. On the hub, you, let, you have trust keys from everybody. So the hub will trust anybody. The point of that is to, to establish the, the, the initial trust. This is the trust establishment procedure. Yeah, but if the hub trusts anyone, that's yes. like trusting no one. Yes, exactly. So the next slide, very few things will change. It changes to that. Trust established. So once, it, once trust is established, you ought to make sure trust key equals false. That is the default. Uh, unless you have set it as true in some policy, so you ought to have trust key equals false, and you ought to have trust keys from equals empty, or trust key from equals to your internal LAM if you trust it. But uh, any unknown key is immediately rejected. Both. <coughs> uh, does this answer uh, your question? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, well, yes, yes, no. Uh, yes, but I'm I'm unsure. If yes, I, I know your. Uh, your, uh, the, the issues you're, that you're thinking, but uh, uh, how do you bootstrap securely? I mean, the title of the presentation is how to securely bootstrap in the open internet, so how to deploy safe engine in the open, in, open internet. Uh, I will get to that and I will do it as a demo, right? Okay, okay good. But so You can say that you, the first section is how to set up the policy. Yeah. I mean, the first uh, yeah, exactly. So, setting up a yeah, but, but still, this, this is in a trusted environment. Yeah. So, uh, it's uh, what was said uh, before that uh, this way you do it in a trusted environment. And most, this is the easy way. Most, uh, I should skip some slides and show you uh, uh, later, but most people uh, have a, an internal setup. Most uh, company setups trust, they do the easy thing. They want to automate it, they want to broadcast a minus minus bootstrap command, do everything they know. It's secure, the, the internal LAN mostly secure. Uh, that's, so that's, that's not about deploying in the open internet, that's about trust, yeah. how to manipulate it, open it, close it at will, uh, open it for some hosts. And uh, I will talk later about, uh, and I will do a demo how to securely uh, deploy. So, so it is the idea that you transitioning from a uh, trusted environment to an untrusted environment at some point? Yes. Uh, uh, in the end, so clear how you in the it. end, you always have to do that. Yeah. Okay. In the end, you always have to have a trusted environment. This might be your laptop with uh, uh, with the client uh, plugged in and mounted file system. This is your trusted environment. <coughs> or it could be your SSH and doing SCP copying because you trust. But in the end, you have to transition from a trusted environment. Uh, yeah, I, I will show it, uh, but uh, that's, the, that's the idea. And the key revocation, uh, if, you, if, you, if you trusted somebody and you want to revoke, it's as simple as delete respective, respective key file. You remove it from PP keys. Uh, the, so the trust management is, uh, is that simple. And I just put a, the first bullet is a reminder. Keep your trust keys from list empty. Uh, and the ACL close down. That's, uh, that's just a reminder that uh, it, it is empty on any deployed uh, hub. And uh, then you only, you only have to delete the, the key file. So that's, uh, that's the standard procedure, what I've been describing so long, uh, all this time. One, ensure protected internal network. The basic step that was, uh, I should have mentioned it first, it is the uh, um, self, uh, the thing that is uh, taken as the base, that uh, was, I took it as granted. Automatically bootstrap. You can visually verify the, uh, in the logs the ID that bootstrap, but uh, even if you verify, oh, that, that's another ID, then it's probably too late. But, uh, and, and last, uh, you empty uh, all your ACLs, access lists, trust key front, and allow connects. Allow connects uh, completely drops some IPs, but it's good if you know that you will only accept from those IPs to, to drop anything else. It's like, uh, uh, it's like IP tables rule. 
there is a note here uh, that uh, uh, basically you can bootstrap like that in your trusted environment, and the key is not tied to an IP. You can then, so I can connect here, or in my internal network, do this procedure, then deploy it, and the, the connection will come from another procedure. The key is not, uh, is not uh, bound to an IP address. And that's uh, probably what uh, uh, you have been asking. This procedure is not, is not recommended uh, in the open internet. It's a standard, it's a do documented, it's easy, it's a magic bootstrap thing, but uh, don't do that when, when a client to hub is uh, really away. Or if you do that, really watch carefully the, the logs to actually see that the MD5 IDs are the same. Alternative ways, you can run from the hub, see if an agent, minus i, minus i is interactive, and uh, host uh, the client IP address. And this will ask you, do you want to accept based on, based on trust? And then you can check the logs. This is a key exchange. exchange. Yes, I want to accept uh, based, uh, based on trust. There are still uh, use, ease of use things that uh, should be added to this. Uh, because you, you actually the key has is not printed. But uh, uh, yeah, we are uh, well aware of that. Uh, uh, the moment you press yes, you have accepted, you have inspected the, the keys exchange and uh, you can accept that. Still, this gives halfway uh, trust because the question is only asked for one way key acceptance, the other way has to be open. So the hub, will, the hub still has to uh, have an open ACL, so uh, it can be hijacked from one way. And the other procedure is uh, to do it uh, to do a complete uh, manual bootstrap, uh, which I will do it now. And uh, you can do it in two modes: either you have your device and you copy anything to your mounted uh, partition, which uh, is okay, uh, but uh, it's not uh, really in the open internet. The other thing is that you have a host somewhere you only trust by SSH access and you copy what you have to copy. So I have it here as, a, as the procedure uh, step by step, but um, this is only for reference, so you will see me doing it. Come on, get the value that. Come on, zoom it as much as I can. Yes, if I zoom it more, I will lose it from my monitor here. So, can use a bigger font, maybe? Yeah. No? And do have the color scheme. The thing is that I use a huge font. Oh, I see. But uh, I have problems with the uh, projector. Yeah. Because you switched uh, to a, a, li a white background and uh, a black background. Yes, I can. Let yeah. me see. Was uh, in work. Some external has this. It's a. I usually use reverse cut. I remember it was one. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Maybe it's middle click. Whatever. Yeah. Um. Sorry, you cannot see it, but uh, I will. Uh, I will just proceed. So, uh, the first step is to actually make sure that uh, your policy is right. So, let me just keep it here so that you can see the procedure. So, the first thing is fail safe CF, update CF, promise CF, 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 and Windows CF. These files have to be deployed in the end and have to be uh, secured from the first deployment and closed down. It's what I described earlier, but we will now see it. Ah, so, so first of all, the face safe. Um, oh, this, is, this is the client. I will go to the hub. This is the hub. Yeah, one important step is that I overrode the inputs face safe.cf. So I overrode the inputs face safe.cf with an input with the face safe.cf in master files. I just copied it there. It's the one that, uh, that you know very well. Uh, it's a short policy. If you search for the word trust, 
then this is the change I introduced. Trust key equals false. This is the only change I did in, the, in that file. Trust key equals false, protocol version latest. I will do all this procedure with, uh, with the TLS protocol, the, the protocol that was introduced in 3.6, because the legacy protocol has some implication with uh, trust being in the last single of this. And uh, this makes the manual steps harder. We have to manipulate the key value store, right? So I will do everything with the latest. So, so to, I have modified uh, this one with uh, the failsafe. Update.cf is uh, similarly modified, protocol version latest and trust key false. Promises.cf. It's again the same. Actually, pro um, protocol, protocol version late. This is the only change I did. And uh, the trust key, you don't need actually to change it, only in phase if it's already there. And uh, finally, the control of the hub. These are the two changes, uh, only necessary, the ones that are commented uh, in Chrome. Trust is from empty. That is, I haven't bootstrapped yet the client, but I have closed trust. So uh, the hub will trust nobody new, and I still haven't, uh, uh, haven't bootstrapped. And uh, allow legacy connects none, which means I close protocol version one to everybody. I'm using only the new protocol, so this is another step secure. The trust is from is the important thing. So how do I both Let's go to the client. This is the this is the client machine. So on the client, first of all, uh, yeah. Sorry about that. I'm gonna do RPM minus E. See, fending community. I was doing some practice a little bit uh, before. I will do RM minus RF bar CF engine. So everything is gone. This is an empty client. We do RPM install. CF engine community. Yeah. So this is a fresh install installation of of uh, CF engine. The first step, CF key. I generate a keeper. Hmm? For the RPM. Ah, it was generated by the RPM. Correct. So I already have. If I do CF key minus P, I think that we saw a little bit ago. It is this MD5 RB. I go to my this is this is 6B FC. If I go to my hub, which has various clients, bootstrap, bar CF and critic keys. Everything that is in critic keys, it is the thing that, that, that I said before. You have just put the, the key in that directly. It's trusted. It's a, it's a local keys and a bunch of keys. There is no this 6B key. So it's a new client, it's completely untrusted. I removed all its directory, I installed the RPMs, new key was generated. So <coughs> now I have to copy, I, I have to echo. This is the, you populate who is your policy server? 192, Policy server. This file does not exist. I tried to do tab, tab completion, but it doesn't exist. It was an empty client. So uh, echo this to varsity fencing policy server. And then I go to my hub. Clear my screen. I will do some SCP. We search my history just to be a bit faster. SCP from from master files failsafe.cf. It's the, the failsafe that I edited basically because the input is the hard generated one. The master files failsafe.cf. That client, which is the top 22, the address at the bottom is wrong. To, to that client in its input. I will just show you that LS var CF engine input is completely empty. There is nothing there. So it's not bootstrap. I copy this. And we have uh, the new phase. 
I do CFA agent minus F by CF dot CF. If you remember, this was the last step of the bootstrap, the evaluation of the uh, of the failure. And you get this ugly error message. This is the important part. The, is it redundant? Or, uh, the, uh, yeah, trust failure. This is trust failure. This is what I expected. So I tried, after, after writing the, the policy server file, after telling him that this is your policy server, I tried to do the bootstrap, the page save to save, which does the bootstrap. But uh, the trust failed because I do not trust the hub, and he does not trust me, and both sides are closed. So I go to the hub. I will search my history for some, some SCP. It's basically this. So yeah, this, uh, this is the set now. Client running fail safe. Fails. So the thing we have to do is have the MD5 of the key and do a copy two ways. So one thing is one thing is to from the client. Safety minus P, but safe tangent. Um, PB keys local host dot. Um, get this, but if you remember, it was missing uh, when I when I searched the, the directory. And to, to from from the client, the local host dot pub <coughs> to the proper. Yeah. Because I did previously a demo to myself, the key generated had a, had a different MD5 uh, hash. So now I replace the current one. What I did was copy the key from the client to the hub TB keys manual. LS var engine TB keys. We saw this before. We put it in input. Yeah, yeah. You copied it to input. I'm kind of stupid. I probably did this mistake before and, and fixed it by hand. I can remember that. Uh, I will just move it from R, see if it finds in inputs. It's good that I double checked. Too good. Uh, yeah, from. So I will move it. You don't. How should you shouldn't put it in inputs? You should put, put it in PP keys. So I move it from inputs to PP keys. And I do a less in PP keys again. And here's my key. So one way trust is established. Now the hub should trust this client. I will try again to run the failsafe. Error, trust fail. We don't trust the hub. The client doesn't trust the hub. So that's what I mean by two-way trust. I'm doing the same thing then for the hub. So um, let me clear this. I'm in the hub. I will SCP once again. I will SCP the varsity fence in localhost.pub. This is the hub's identity, basically. To my client. Great. And now let's cross fingers and see if the complete manual bootstrap works. Um, probably that's the promise locking. It goes too fast. I'm quite curious. Let's see. No? So. Great. So that's the manual. Uh, Bootstrap procedure. List the directory again, please. Hmm? List the directory again. You're right. Okay. Everything first. Update.cf run, run later. Everything that is <coughs> on the last step of uh, auto bootstrap, that is what the failsafe.cf does, was done now. But we manually exchange trust. Why? Right? Because we are in the open internet. Or we do that when we connect. Uh, uh, when we mount the partition uh, of the device here. So this can be automated, but I want to go through. But bootstrap is not some magic. So this, uh, this is a manual bootstrap. 
Do you have any questions on that uh, before I proceed? I need to explain something. I will get my remote again. No need to be on the keyboard. Yes, isn't there a way to do that that is a bit easier than SCP the key? With the root authority? Mm -hmm. So it's what, uh, uh, it's what was uh, asked before by uh, Mr. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Young. Uh, Young? Yeah. So the, the answer is no. It's not. Uh, if, you want to, if you do it with a run agent, yeah. you really need to, uh, to be careful on your logs. And the moment you press yes, you have to see the key appearing. And then you have 50% trust. We had a good discussion with Yarle before, and I'm, I'm eager to make it easier. Uh, even though this is a procedure for somebody to automatically deploy 100 hosts, this is not overhead for somebody that, that will do that, if he has a good overview of the steps. Uh, but uh, I really liked uh, what uh, Yarle mentioned about putting the keys under consideration in a different directory. Denying them, don't allowing them to access, but having them in a different directory mm -hmm. until the, the admin um, will uh, Will uh, grant access, but you can you can deploy actually your, your, if you deploy cloud instances if you do deploy embedded devices you should deploy them with a public key. Yeah, server. You shouldn't do SCP. I did SCP because uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so how, how do this at the university also, also is that we have this uh, public key of the master included in the RPM that yeah. we install yeah, that's uh, uh, the APC install and then at least the agent can trust the master yeah. and we trust always, the master has trust keys from our cable networks mm. uh, always so the, bit, uh, the installation process needs to happen from a cable network mm. and after that you can take the machine yeah. and it will Still. Yeah, uh, that's it, would, a, it would be nice if you can use the public key in as, as, as input of the bootstrap minus f this public key and then it takes care that it will be put with the right hash and you could directly uh, yeah so give the hash at least in the command line yeah yeah something like that yeah i mean well, we want to make it easier yeah. uh, ease of use uh, yeah uh, no, no or, or, or give the input file and you can calculate the hash and then you know how, how, how to put it there. Then you can put the public key of the hub in the central place. And yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can give it as an extra argument. Yeah. Public key in the end is a public key. Yeah. It can be in a public place and for everybody to download it. Just yeah. Like, uh, public key, you can download it. Yeah. Well, well uh, what you did would be quite easy to script. Yeah. Uh, that, that's the point of this. That. Uh, uh, this procedure is not magic, it's five steps, and if you deploy 100 uh, or you have a script to deploy your cloud instance, it's easy enough. So that was my question. Yeah. 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 I think that the key in, in what you did is that the actual authentication that you rely on in order to uh, get the server to trust, uh, uh, to trust the, the agent is that you gave the password during that you gave your password during the SC, SCP and yeah, so that's it's it's like like that's and the fact that we try to do is to uh, establish a secure channel when you already have another one right so yes. the concept yes. is that you uh, yeah you manage to pass uh, credentials in this case it is uh, keys yeah uh, so that the second secure channel can be initiated right and, and I mean, this is a pattern that, that's used uh, in a number of protocols like uh, SCEP, SCEP. Uh, this is done that way too, basically. SCEP what? SCEP, Simple Certificate Exchange Protocol. Okay. okay. Um, it's used a lot by, by Microsoft, but also by Cisco, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and so basically what, what you do is you, you say, the, the, the administrator of the device is authenticated, and, and once that happens, then you can, you can upload the, the key. Basically, take advantage of the initial trust. 
Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I will save some uh, of the discussion for the end, so that I can make it uh, yeah. uh, for the second demo, hopefully, that I have. Mm -hmm. uh, do I have, uh, how much time do I have? Uh, okay. Just one. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So, uh, yeah, you have to have some initial trust, but we can discuss how you can achieve this or how to make the procedure easier. So I, I'll continue now. Uh, talk a little bit about the TLS protocol. That's a new protocol introduced in 3.6, the one that I switched on in this uh, presentation. So generally, why prefer TLS? Uh, because everybody is, is, here, is listening to all these vulnerabilities. I, I have to say that the TLS is fully encrypted and it integrated check channel. You don't get that with a classic protocol of uh, CFN. Uh, you get encryption when you set encrypt equals true. You get uh, hash verification when, when, you get, when you set that one. Your commands are plain. Uh, if somebody snoops, he can see get that file and then some random data. Get uh, list that directory and then some random uh, listing because it's encrypted. So <coughs> you gain a fully encrypted and integrity check channel, which is frequently attacked, unfortunately. Every now and then we get a new TLS vulnerability. And uh, that's, uh, that's actually a, a quite a good thing, I would say, because it's also frequently updated. The CFNZ protocol, yes, we know it's secure. No, we might doubt it, because we're five persons in the room. Uh, how many people have attacked it? What if, uh, if we conquer uh, the, all the big enterprise solutions and everybody attacks it and then we have nothing? How do we update it? So that's the that, uh, that's an advantage. You have a, uh, an industry standard. A, it gets attacked. It gets the updates immediately, and we get them. And it's slightly faster as well because uh, not because it's uh, we are doing the key exchange as as everybody does it, but the code is tightly optimized. And uh, you don't lose anything. Uh, we we made sure to keep the same uh, user experience. That is, we don't like CAs, uh, certificates. Uh, CRLs. We use the old trust model. Basically, because TLS uses certificates in its uh, key exchange, we generate in-memory temporary certificates based only on the RSA key. And the only thing that you compare are RSA keys. So you don't have to care about certificates. You never see them. The file is not a certificate. This is what you saw me doing in the demo. <coughs> to enforce TLS in 3.6, protocol version latest, and trust key equals false, that's uh, trust equals false defaults to false. Just name it uh, to, to pass this message that uh, uh, you do not just change this because you want things to work. If you do that in the open internet, uh, anybody can, can get in the channel. So protocol version labels, that's all you have to do. And in body server control, if you want, by default we accept the new and the old connections. We, we snoop in the channel and we see the bytes if they are a TLS record we automatically switch to, to TLS. If not, we go to the other. But uh, we suggest if you move all your infrastructure to TLS, allow legacy connects, no, MTS list. Plan is to, to extend uh, the support of TLS. Uh, TLS 1, TLS 1.1, TLS 1.2. Uh, unfortunately, now this, the version we use of TLS is hard-coded. The TLS 1.3 will come with many improvements, which is, which is very, very well scrutinized, so uh, we will extend it more, we will support everything, so we commit to supporting TLS, so that we change as default. This is the last bullet. We haven't changed as default, but we want to do it. Right now, the default is TLS 1.0, right? In, uh, when we use TLS, we yeah. use TLS 1.0. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there is not the option to change that yet, but uh, when we make it uh, default, we, everything will be configured. Like, I want only TLS 1.2. Uh, you will be able to set. But uh, that's the plan to make it configurable and uh, default. Will there be a list like in Sorry. Etsy? So you can say, I support these protocols. Yeah. One, yeah. one, the one, one, the two. Yeah, yeah. So the plan is like that. a list and a string. Yeah, either a list or, a, or an OpenSSL like string, you know, yeah. like the ones you're using in Apache. This is OpenSSL syntax. Uh, it's not quite clear uh, yet, but there, there will be a list. I accept that, nothing else. Now we accept TLS 1.0. SSL 3 is dropped, SSL 2 is yeah. of course dropped, but this should be configured by, by the user. Tomorrow, TLS 1 might be deemed uh, vulnerable. Yeah. So. so now I'm going to uh, change a bit uh, 
this uh, uh, subject. We have already bootstrapped in the open internet, but we want, we have 20 clients, but uh, we want to do selective asset distribution. We want to distribute files or policy to specific clients that others cannot see. This, is, uh, this goes against the principle that, uh, uh, of, of configuration management, maybe, that uh, this documents the, your infrastructure and it has to, to be uh, common knowledge. So the generic guideline, according to theory at least, is you do not distribute secrets in the policy. Your policy is a description of the state of your infrastructure. It's not secret. But many times you cannot avoid it. One thing, one very nice tool that uh, I, was, uh, I recently found out is a community effort. So I put it here because uh, I like it. It's CF Keycrypt, which uh, actually encrypts specific things with a public key and decrypts with a private key. So, the, so you, if it is encrypted on the hub, it is encrypted with a, a public key of that machine, then the, that machine gets it. It's the only one that can decrypt it because it's the only one that has the private. Check this. This is a, a bit of raw effort still. I mean, code, you have to compile it, but it's really simple, so it's quite nice. But uh, sometimes uh, you have uh, to, even if you adhere to the rule that you do not distribute sensitive information, some data is a bit sensitive. I mean, you don't want hashes. Hashes, if they're properly salted, you don't really care, but you don't want them to be everywhere. What, uh, what reason is there for the hashes of the web server to be on the workstation, workstations of the, of the people? So there comes the, the layer of protection I'm going to describe now. According to the key, you grant or deny access, and you use a shortcut to make your life easier. So these are the two keywords in bundle server access rules, admit keys, and shortcut. Begin the demo. This is in uh, physics. Uh, if you have a uh, physics zero related, you can make use of it. So I have set up my infrastructure and I will execute. I, I, I already have modified the server, the hub, with the, with the first thing you, you, you see here. So I'm going on the hub, bar CF engine, inputs, um, controls, CF server D. And besides this, these two changes that remain from the previous demo, there is this change from the default. What do I say here? var CF engine priv, this is my own directory. Connection key, which is a magic variable. Uh, it's not, you can't do what you know uh, with every variable here because this is interpreted during connection time. This is not being evaluated with the standard evaluator. This is during connection of the incoming client. So you can have a few things here. So the var CF engine priv connection key shadow will be admitted only to connection key. So only the one with the proper key will be able to enter his key name directly. And he will also be able to do it using a shortcut, my shadow. So I will proceed in on the <coughs> client. We do a less cut get my shadow and I will execute this puzzle. You can see the body copied from. It has the only change uh, protocol version labels because I have closed everything with the first one, with the, the protocol. And I will fetch that file in two ways. One is uh, I will fetch it and put it in TMP my shadow using the shortcut. Now in CF engine, this is forbidden syntax in, in, in old CF engine. You cannot have a relative path. This, is, uh, this could be also a security code. Now, in, in the new CF engine, relative paths are not allowed unless they are found as shortcuts. So 
If you don't have an initial slot, it can be uh, interpreted by the server as a shortcut. And because it has that configuration line, the shortcut will give you, uh, the server will give you this. So I will populate two files, one uh, copied as my shadow, the other copied with a full path, showing that uh, they will both be the same. So CF agent, names, KF, get my shadow. Ah. I'm um, sorry, RM, TMP, my server, but because I did it before. So I will run CF agent get my server. I will run the bundle get my server. I expect this to fail and I will let you know why. Right. Maybe you should retry the information on hmm? Yeah. Uh, I was expecting this to fail and I think it failed. But I didn't get some message. Yeah. Can't start file my shadow on that server. Can't start file Vars Defensive Creep shadow on that server. And uh, uh, this is the default uh, answers you, you always get by the CF agent, the CF agent on uh, CF engine. Historically, the client knows nothing. He just gets a refusal. That's a, that's a golden method, refusal from the server. Now I will do it, but we don't have time probably. If you look at the verbose log of the server, you will see access denied. So, but the reason is that this is the server. Uh, ls var cf engine creep. We have one directory which is uh, which is, which has a shadow in there. But that directory, so I'm gonna go to the client again. Cf key. Uh, I'm gonna find it. key minus p. This identity is a six b fc, and the directory. Is named CE58. It's my previous demo, uh, what I used previously. Now that I removed everything, the client changed the identity. It doesn't allow me to go into into the new client. So what I'm gonna do is mkd var cf engine preview this, and I'm gonna do echo blah. In that shadow file. Now I'm going to do it again. Let's hope it works. So on the client, I'm running again. I get my shadow, the bundle, copying from the shortcut, success. Copying from the directory itself, success. So this is to show you cut. I'm going to cut PMP my shadow. Blah. My shadow to blah. Um, and I did it both ways just to show you that the shortcut is not some magic. Uh, you can either use the shortcut, like I want my shadow and the server interprets it, but this is not what forbids you. The shortcut by itself does not forbid you to, to enter that directory. So you need the admit keys. What you saw in the demo, in the slides. So you need the admit keys. This is what forbi forbids you to go there. You can take it two ways, either using by the shortcut or not. But if you have that admit keys entry, you will only be allowed if you have the proper key. And that can also be a nest list of keys. I might want this key, this key, this key, this key uh, to access that directory. Uh, and I had a very nice suggestion that you need to figure out a nice way to do it, to group keys and make it easier to, to, to have a huge list of keys there. But that's a feature. For selective asset distribution. Please. Uh, so, did you try compiling this, this encryption thing at the, the, <laughs> at the better name already, uh, the key crypt and the access controls? Uh, you, you, should, you should first show it to a key crypt, which encrypts data, yeah. but your shadow, uh, shadow file. Yeah. Uh, so, did you try compiling it, uh, combining it with the access list? No. Yeah. No. It's completely relevant. Uh, the CFT crypt is uh, just a binary that yeah. will compile anything, yeah. uh, that will uh, encrypt anything 
to, to another file. And to tell you the truth, uh, it's a bit overkill if you ask me for uh, for uh, already salted and hashed uh, passwords. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I closed the access like this. Mm -hmm. You don't have a leakage of, uh, of lots of information mm -hmm. in your infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But in order to not disclose everything to everyone, mm -hmm. you use this uh, secondary layer. Okay. The CFT crypt covers a very well asked for uh, domain, which is I must distribute passwords. Mm -hmm. This is not good, but it's been asked all the time. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a good idea on that, and it was provided by the community exactly because they need it. Yeah, uh, what I think we'll do, uh, this is great, by the way. Uh, what I think would be nice is that I'd have the option to have uh, the agent not complain if the file is file or directly doesn't exist. Uh, so it might be that uh, you, some hosts uh, doesn't have a file, and then nothing should happen. It's just silently ignoring. Nothing happened. Yeah. So do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing? Yeah, but rather than having it complain in the dogs and in the mails. That so it didn't that complain. You see, I had to run my site. So this is the okay. default, which so uh, some people default, like, okay. some people yeah. don't like. Excellent. Yeah. It's, uh, so it hit me some information, I just ran it in the first place, mm -hmm. it got zero. And I did it less my shadow, okay. it was not there. That's but good. when I ran it in form mode, I saw mm -hmm. it. So because we did something similar, but we didn't affect it, because uh, it was possible on the server side uh, with this. And more specifically, we just had the client look up its own directory uh, by this uh, hostname, right? <laughs> yep. Uh, but then, we had some, some, this was actually the method that we used to use for distributing external classes to, to agents. Uh, but not all those has these external classes. And then we got a lot of noise because this file didn't exist for those hosts. Yeah, noise is, is, a, is, a, is an issue and um, <laughs> people want things yeah. right even in case of errors. Mm -hmm. So I think this is, uh, yeah, even, yeah, at least if you run minus i in info mode, you get some more uh, data. I mean, that's a level of syslog. Yeah. If you said uh, that you want to log to syslog with info mode, this will be low. Yeah. If you cut it at notice mode, mm -hmm. this will not be yeah, yeah. If you use verbal, then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the last thing that I had in mind, and a bit uh, over time, I think. Uh, but uh, the last thing I had in mind was uh, to help with uh, diagnosing problems. So, as I said, uh, it's, it's historically, uh, uh, it's a history of CF engine not to reveal information, generally. So, the client does not know anything, he gets a refusal. So, the, I would write about, uh, run the server in verbos, and you will get the error on the server only, not on the client. But, uh, Yesterday, around <laughs> noon, yes, I got a very good idea <laughs> right in my head. I don't know how this came. Uh, I think I, I, I just good inspiration that uh, maybe the information guys I, helped I, I a little bit. Yeah, that's very nice. That was a good idea. Yeah, and, uh, well, I might use it to debug some instances. So I didn't write anything more. I deleted everything. I'll send you guys a bill. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, <laughs> That's all. <laughs> I love playing too. Okay. So we should. Uh, just have one question. Um, is it possible to have a different key size for the keys when they're generated? The CFT doesn't have this uh, option now. It's a uh, 2048 uh, beta yeah. SA automatically. Of course, you can generate your own key with uh, so it would just open SSH yeah. the necessary parameters, but uh, it doesn't open, open SSH, so. okay. but it doesn't have that option. Okay. If you generate the bigger key, it won't, it won't, it will still work, but... Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> okay. Any questions? I had a comment, actually, about your last slide. Um, having a second server running on a different board to capture data from one machine is basically a workaround. Um, because what would be really nice is if the CF server could, if we could tell it to 
output verbose information just for one IP or a range of IPs. There's some way of communicating with it. That would be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And without restarting it. Uh, yeah. I know what you mean. I actually had wanted to have a picture in mind. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I would, I would like to have an audit log. I would like to know which clients try to access stuff they are not supposed to see. And the only option I had was running the server in verbose mode all day, and I didn't want to do that. Yeah. But basically, the least thing uh, that I have in mind in in adding uh, to the server is an HTTP like uh, separate. Log. <coughs> separate file, not syslog, separate log. Uh, that will, that should help. The, the list of hosts, or verbose at least, should help. Okay. Let's say that I have it uh, in my plans. So hopefully I will get it. Anything else? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.